Welcome everyone. It's uh, January 30th. We're already through the month and the last week of the challenge. And I want to thank all you guys for showing up here for us. And those of you that watch this recording tomorrow, uh, I hope you get something from it. Let's go ahead and share our screen and get started. You hear the birds? <laughs> God, it's terrible. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. It is. I, I feel like I'm in Disney in the jungle. Am I all shared yeah. here? I did believe yeah, there that. Is. <laughs> Let me make sure I did Oops, say There it went. Yeah, just to read. There we go. Okay. So let's uh Dorothy, you tell me if you can see it. I can see it. Yep. But I'm gonna have to get rid of my things are right in the middle of it. All right. Oh my god, let's do it again. Then if I need to if if you can't see it or something, you guys tell me. I and uh we can always bring it down. Okay, so last week was a, a, a bomb for my questions. I didn't work. So I'm back to the original format. <laughs> and, if, and if you don't want to answer any of my questions, you can talk to the little squirrel up there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one thing that people misunderstand about me is I do believe in second chances because the craziest thing I've ever done is, so these should all be great answers, don't you think? And uh, our, our standard, what you want to share and what you're grateful for. I don't have anything driving me nuts, not at all. Uh, I don't feel misunderstood. And I do believe in second chances because I think, uh, you, you, you know, you have to learn. And you learn through trial and error. You don't learn by getting things right. You learn by getting things wrong. Definitely believe in second chances. And I, I don't know. I've done a lot of crazy things. So I'm going to pass this on to the next person. Who's going? I'll go. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. driving me nuts. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. One thing that people misunderstand about me is... I don't know. See, me either. Nobody's ever told me they misunderstand me, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do believe in second chances because I know I've received sec second chances quite a bit. Yes. So, I'm, you know, I make sure everybody gets a second chance when it comes to me. And, you know, like you said, we learn from our mistakes. And if we didn't have the second chances, we would never be able to go on and use what we learned. Thank you. You said it better than me. <laughs> uh, the craziest thing I've ever done is... Uh, Mary John, I think. Everybody told me I was crazy and never going to last and all that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going on 44 years. And yes. It's been... A wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> you are John's best friend. You are his everything. He is my best friend too. So, yeah. what I want to share most tonight is <laughs> we are headed for the cruise Thursday. Wow. Yay! We're going where it's definitely going to be warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hotel filled up today, so you got a lot of company. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but those crazy people are going down there on the bu on buses. I'm going down the night before. Yeah. So, let's see. What I am most grateful for is just everything's going great in my life. And John had a good cardiologist report. Things are just going great. That's always good. Yep. Who's next? Mm, I'm still thinking. <laughs> Lisa, go for it. I'll go. Okay, Jan, go ahead. Okay. The one thing that people misunderstand about me is I have been told by close friends that people think I'm hobby. Oh, really? And I don't feel I am at all. So I think they misunderstood, not me. <laughs> I agree. They think you're what? I'm sorry. I think I'm stuck up. Oh. <laughs> I didn't talk. Maybe you're just selective. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I can I'll make, keep I can that in mind. That. Oops, Oops I, I lost my screen. Oh, did you? Is it back yet? No. 
Okay. He's froze. Okay. So uh, you do believe in second chances because? Oh, yeah. I, I believe in second chances. They're not second chances. As was said previously, they're just opportunities to to learn that's how it is the craziest thing i've ever done i have done so many crazy things i call them adventures i occasionally have an adventure and it's when i do things that are supposedly crazy but they're just fun yeah yeah what i want to share tonight i don't know i think i share quite a bit when i'm here um so I'll say I, I share myself when I'm here. Uh -huh. What am I most grateful for? This week I want to say what I'm most grateful for this week are friends. I always, I'm so, I'm crazy about family. I don't know what I do without family. It's <laughs> the most important thing. But your, your friends, your lifetime friends are your family. Yep, my choice. But, but I really, this week I really appreciated my friends. That's cool. Thank you, Jan. Good. Next. I'll go. Go ahead. Um, I'm not, I don't, nothing's driving me nuts right now. Except my <laughs> not even Dick. Huh? I got myself nuts, but <laughs> I don't, I don't think I, people misunderstand me. Um, if they do, they don't tell me. Okay. Um, I believe in second chances because I know I've had to have second chances. Um, several times, quite often sometimes. <laughs> the craziest thing I have ever done, well, I've done a lot of crazy things, but I think one of the craziest was we were visiting our parents at Cape Vincent, and we ended up in South Carolina, and we were supposed to go home to Albany. <laughs> so I think we took a wrong turn or something. No, oh, yeah. we just decided we didn't want to go home, so we went to South Carolina. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Um, what I want to share most tonight is phase one of my garden is almost done. Okay. Now I have phase two. What's in it? Right now, just rocks. Okay. <laughs> I have been um, I have been sifting the rocks out of the sand because there is like probably a hundred dollars worth of rocks that have sunk into the sand. Oh, okay. So I have been sifting them and putting them on screening, uh, and I've got almost phase one done. Okay. Uh, when I, I'm most grateful for is that Dick is doing better. Um, he's still not 100% like he was a couple months ago, but he does seem to be doing better uh, the last two days. That's great, Marsh. Yes. I'm very thankful. <laughs> Are you done? Thank you. Yep. Dorothy. Wow. I'll tell you, the one thing that people misunderstand about me is I belong to many organizations and they always want me to be a leader. And what they don't understand is I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I want to be a part of the group. <laughs> you have leader potential, though. I, I, I don't really. I don't want to. <laughs> yes, but you do. Never again volunteer yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, and I do believe in second chances. I mean, I've gotten so many second chances in my life. I don't remember anything crazy that I've ever done. I really don't. I, I'm, I, I can don't. tell you one. You sat here beside me and went into some kind of shock. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. No, was, yeah, but that wasn't... <laughs> willfully. Like, it wasn't willfully. <laughs> <laughs> you scared was, me to death. Oh, but that was a uh, syncope. That was uh, a short circuit in the brain. Yeah. So um, mom is doing great, and I'm grateful for that. And I, I took her to the heart specialist today. They had said she had uh, PACs, and the heart specialist says, your heart is good. And all of the blood work that I had taken for her is all good. And he said the only reason she had PACs is probably because of pain. And uh, he's not concerned about her at all and only come back whenever she needs him. Oh, that's amazing. 95, right? right? It was amazing. Everything yep. has been working really well for mom. Yeah. That's great, Dorothy. That's so great. You've made the difference, and we all know that. <laughs> I do what I can. Yeah, Mark Barbara talks about how you have been the difference, and 
your mother's life? Well, I think that I think that everybody does what they can do and try to be an advocate when you don't believe what they say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's correct. Who's next? Are you done, Dorothy? No. Yes, I'm done. Okay. Go. Rock and roll. The only thing I have that's driving me nuts and I avoid it is fools on the road. <laughs> <laughs> and they are quite crazy. Yeah. Um, the one thing that people misunderstand about me is um, I have no clue other than um, they think I'm like wild and crazy and I'm really not um, I do believe in second chances number one because I've been given a lot of them but I would like to add that while I believe in second chances um, I have been guilty of giving third fourth fifth ten chances and yeah. that's just insanity yeah. so um, follow your gut instinct on that the craziest thing I have ever done that's a hard one to choose, but I'm going to go with um, rappelling out of a helicopter. Wow. And oh. That I didn't have a choice about. Oh. <laughs> 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 and right behind that would be buying a retired thoroughbred and thinking I was a cowgirl nearly getting killed many times on her, but it was fun. Um, and today I am most grateful that I am on the mend. Woohoo! I actually got nearly 8,000 steps in before it got chilly this afternoon. Yeah. Good. She's been real sick. Excellent. Yeah. I didn't see her until today. It's been like four days. Sure. Yeah. I know. I was having withdrawals. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, Connie, and Tony were too. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you done? Yep. Hey, she passed. Who's next? Marshall. Me? Okay. Um, what I'm most grateful for is that uh, Connie and Tony opened up their house to me and my critters, and we had a place to go. I really, really appreciate it. Not a problem. Tony, she only does one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Marsha. You're welcome. Well, let's see. I do believe in second chances. Because I like to get second chances. If I like to get second chances, sometimes the third chance. <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah, that I, I think they deserve that. The craziest thing I ever done is I told my father I didn't need his money. I could join in the service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost got killed because of it. <laughs> he said, "I never told my father." Uh, anything like that again. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> and what I want to share most tonight is uh, I'm real happy. I'm real happy. Good. Which, uh, I, you know, most people don't say to themselves, I am happy. They want somebody else to tell them, oh, you're happy. You should be happy. I am happy. <laughs> That's it. I know it's all that swing trading you're doing. Yeah. I never hear about it anymore. I used to jump out of airplanes a lot when I was younger. I got 105 jumps out of airplanes, but oh. that's not crazy. That was fun. <laughs> jump? Somebody would have to push me. <laughs> yeah, really. John, are you still there? You want to share something with us? People doesn't there he is. Let's see. What's driving me nuts? I can't think of anything that's driving me nuts other than this cough and sneezing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's going on for the last couple of days. Um, one thing that people will misunderstand about me, uh, probably tons of things. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, I don't know of anything that they misunderstand me about me. If they have, they haven't told me. Yeah. Um, I do believe in second chances, absolutely. Uh, I've been given many, 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 many. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my Lord tells me to forgive 70 times 7, so I still got a bunch of them to go. Yeah. Um, the craziest thing I've ever done, you guys have been talking about repelling. I used to teach it, 
Oh. Uh, yeah. Fire service. And the uh, craziest thing I think I ever did while repelling was the Australian crawl. The very first time I did it, it was out of a six story building and you stand on the edge and you look down and oh. you go down face first and you walk down the side of the building looking at Whoa. the ground. Oh, oh my gosh. And I taught, that's, after I did it the first time, then I started teaching that one. It's called the Australian Crawl. Uh, I haven't heard that before. That's interesting. What I want to share most tonight, um, I'm glad that a cardiologist didn't schedule any more tests or anything for the first time in a long time, so that's awesome. Um, and I have this great trading partner that comes over every morning and <laughs> hearing all jokes and Try to make money. <laughs> <laughs> we visited people last night, and I didn't want to be rude. But after like an hour and a half of him talking about everything he's learned in swing training, <laughs> I turned around and said to the people we were visiting, I said, can you tell he really likes it? You know, <laughs> he, still, he still didn't take the hint. He continued to talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, that was funny. I did think of something that people misunderstand about me. And it's, uh, they misunderstand my kindness for weakness. And, uh, and, and, and there have been times that's not served them well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, misunderstand about me is um, uh -huh. they think I'm a big, scary, mean guy. Oh, okay. And I don't think that's who I am. You're not. You're like a teddy oh, bear. You're a teddy but, bear. Yeah. But Tony scares people, too. Mm. Yeah, just I, not everybody. Usually if a baby comes around me, they start bawling instantly. Uh, he attracts babies. That's <laughs> crazy. So in the new health challenge, um, sometimes people end up in Aaron's room. And I'll, uh, right up there in his message, he says, uh, I think that's what they do now. Is rather than getting the room set up, I think they just fish them out from one room. So when you get in there, you just tell them, I need to be in. And I'm doing this because the request was in the room. So Beverly, and all you do is follow the directions and his daily message there. And what he tells you to do is let them know whose room you need to be in. And that's all you have to do. I did, and they took care of it the next day. I yeah, just I didn't even have to Link. I did too. I got in Aaron's room. Oh, okay. So, uh, are you, have you told them to move you over? Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. Well, you're not there. No, the last no. for the last I, challenge. Okay, very good. This challenge. Yeah. Okay, and now in this challenge, it looks like they're going to start the prizes back up. I know in our room we had people win Fitbits. Lisa won the water bottle. Which, uh, many of us won money. Now they're doing other types of things in there. So we have a little bit of something different happening next time. So that's cool. And we've actually wandered into first place a few times here. So that's, that's great. That's a new experience. So tonight, uh, you know, we're going to talk about metabolism. And I have chosen that subject because I really think that is behind uh, – Anything that we're able to accomplish, whether it's uh, going up or going down. So only you can decide for yourself what feels right, ultimately what serves you. Your health is your experiment and no one else's. Uh, going into, marsha has gone into the 4, 2, and 1. I've gone into the 4, 2, and 1. And uh, that's, that's, that's an experiment in itself. But there's people who are d doing different programs. And that's what works for them. So very much uh, individual. Uh, and and don't, don't compare yourself to someone else. And don't try to uh, do what someone else is doing because what works for you may only work for you and not someone else. All I can do is plant a seed, open your mind to new ways of thinking, and your eyes to new ways of seeing. I hope those seeds grow and flourish your life and change it in a way that allows you to spend your time here on earth doing what you really want to do. I've invested a lot of time uh, in reading and learning and attending and trying and all of the things that, that you know, give you a background where you can help other people. So I'm like a little tree of knowledge when it comes to this. And I'm here for you guys to pick what I know, just like you with some fruit. 
don't judge each day by the harvest you reach you you reap but by the seeds that you plant and uh, we're going to talk about how you rehabilitate your body you know when we talk about losing weight we make it so single-minded so single-purposed and it's always about losing weight but in reality those of us that have allowed ourselves to uh to get out of shape what we're actually making the commitment to do is go back and rehabilitate our body and not just our body but our mind uh, do you want to rehabilitate your relationship with nutrition and exercise for a healthier life or do you just want to lose weight uh, rehabilitate. 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 And so when you talk about rehabilitate, then you know that takes steps. Uh, the path of least resistance to health. We all want the easy fix, but we got to have a plan. Without a plan, you have no direction. But there are so many things you can do that have nothing to do with your choice of how to lose weight that you can do for getting healthy. And you guys can help me here. And these are the things I come up with. You can take the minimum dose of healthy consciousness to get you the desired effect. You can do the things with the highest reward with the least effort. Now, obviously, relaxation is good for us. But how many of us will go a month at a time without ever doing, not you, Sue and John. Y'all will do a lot of <laughs> relaxation. Uh, you too. But that hasn't always been the case. But you can see where relaxation will play into health. And getting up and moving, whether it's just going outside mm -hmm. and walking to the end of the street, mm -hmm. walking to the mm -hmm. end of the block, and get, get some form of movement in there. And then the attitude, mm -hmm. having a good attitude about things and not letting it, like Tony said tonight, he's happy. That's mm -hmm. good to hear, Tony. Mm -hmm. That made me feel really good to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. You can change the size of your plate. Uh, that can be intentional. You can watch your portions. You can get your healthy sleep. You can drink your water without ever talking about losing weight. There are so many ways to get healthy that have nothing to do with losing weight. Does anybody want to add any other things in there that you could do that would be like a habit of health? Did uh -huh. I get them? Well, I think you yeah. did. It, 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 it make you happy. Yeah. Live in the now. Okay, very good. Good. Listen to your body's whispers before they become screams. Yes. And we're going to talk today about the perks of a healthy metabolism. What is a calorie? Don't say it, Lisa. <laughs> Don't say what? She loves the little creatures. <laughs> yeah, you didn't send me a picture of the other one. Uh-huh. Well, come get it. We hear about calories all the time. How many calories are in this cookie? How many are burned by 100 jumping jacks, or long distance running, or fidgeting? But what is a calorie really? And how many of them do we actually need? Calories are a way of keeping track of the body's energy budget. A healthy balance occurs when we put in about as much energy as we lose. If we consistently put more energy into our bodies than we burn, the excess will gradually be stored as fat in our cells and will gain weight. If we burn off more energy than we replenish, we'll lose weight. So we have to be able to measure the energy we consume and use, and we do so with a unit called the calorie. One calorie, the kind we measure in food, also called a large calorie, is defined as the amount of energy it would take to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. Everything we consume has a calorie count, a measure of how much energy the item stores in its chemical bonds. The average pizza slice has 272 calories. There are about 78 in a piece of bread, and an apple has about 52. That energy is released during digestion and stored in other molecules that can be broken down to provide energy when the body needs it. It's used in three ways. About 10% enables digestion, about 20% fuels physical activity, and the biggest chunk, around 70%, supports the basic functions of our organs and tissues. That third usage corresponds to your basal metabolic rate, a number of calories you would need to survive 
if you weren't eating or moving around. Add in some physical activity and digestion, and you arrive at the official guidelines for how many calories the average person requires each day, 2,000 for women and 2,500 for men. Those estimates are based on factors like average weight, physical activity, and muscle mass. So does that mean everyone should shoot for around 2,000 calories? Not necessarily. If you're doing an energy-guzzling activity, like cycling the Tour de France, your body could use up to 9,000 calories per day. Pregnancy requires slightly more calories than usual. And elderly people typically have a slower metabolic rate. Energy is burned more gradually, so less is needed. Here's something else you should know before you start counting calories. The calorie counts on nutrition labels measure how much energy the food contains, not how much energy you can actually get out of it. Fibrous foods like celery and whole wheat take more energy to digest, so you'd actually wind up with less energy from a 100-calorie serving of celery than a 100-calorie serving of potato chips. Not to mention the fact that some foods offer nutrients like protein and vitamins, while others provide far less nutritional value. Eating too many of those foods could leave you overweight and malnourished. And even with the exact same food, different people might not get the same number of calories. Variations in things like enzyme levels, gut bacteria, and even intestine length means that every individual's ability to extract energy from food is a little different. So a calorie is a useful energy measure, but to work out exactly how many of them each of us requires, we need to factor in things like exercise, food type, and our body's ability to process energy. Good luck finding all of that on a nutrition label. All right, let's get back to the PowerPoint. So we have learned that in order to lose a pound, you have to reduce your intake by 3,500. Isn't that right, Dorothy? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and a calorie is what burns the metabolism. What are the things that make your metabolism uh, work? And having those small meals that keeps your metabolism working. Uh, having breakfast every morning, that's why they say it's the most important meal of the day. That kicks your metabolism off right away. And of course, exercise is another way of getting your metabolism. The faster your metabolism is, the more calories it burns. And like they said in this, everyone doesn't burn calories the same. So what I was thinking today is that by understanding your numbers, understanding your metabolism, understanding calories, understanding what it is that you need to consume in order to maintain the weight that you want. Those are all numbers that you can know and then you can start making choices in terms of your overall health of how to get to where it is you need to be. Your basal metabolic rate is what it takes for you to literally survive. And that's when they talk about the body going into starvation. If you are not getting the uh, enough calories to carry your basic needs, your body is going to think that you're in peril. It's going to slow down your metabolism so you don't need as much and your, and your uh, major functions continue. So getting the, that's why they say you have to eat to lose weight. So being in the five and one, that is uh, perfectly formulated and has all of your proper uh, macronutrients in the right portions. It also has low glycemic anti-inflammatory. The fact is portion controlled. In that program, as long as you adhere to the program, you're compliant. It's an excellent program and a way to have rapid weight loss and it puts you into fat burn. But if you don't do it exactly the way that it is designed, and you add anything to that. Now you start starving your body. And then that's the part where you want to go and find out what your chi is. What is the amount of calories that you need to have in order to uh, know what you need to do to lose weight? So the BMR is what you need to survive. Now let's learn a little bit about the metabolism and then we'll talk more about the chi. 
Hello, in this video, you're going to learn exactly what metabolism is and how it plays a part in just about everything you do. So, what is metabolism? It's the process of transforming food, like nutrients, into fuel or energy. More specifically, metabolism is the harmonizer between two bodily functions that are opposites of each other. This example will help explain things much better. Let's say that we are in the lobby of a building and there's a guy working the front desk. Let's call him Mr. Metabolism. Along comes a worker with a package marked food. So he asks Mr. Metabolism, where should I send this package? Now Mr. Metabolism has two choices here. He could choose the door marked catabolism. Catabolism is the process of breaking down cells to create energy for the many functions your body does. From blinking to thinking, moving a finger, and even transporting blood, everything you do requires energy, and catabolism provides you with the energy to do so. Now, the other door he could choose is marked anabolism. Anabolism is used to create more cells in your body. A great example of this is when you cut your finger. Anabolism will start the process of creating skin cells to clot the blood and begin the healing process immediately. So these are the two options Mr. Metabolism has to choose from. Now, usually you'll be requiring energy, so sending boxes to the catabolism door often makes sense. However, our body is also always growing and trying to stay alive, and it constantly needs new cells all the time. So sending boxes to the anabolism door makes sense as well. And this is what your metabolism is doing all day and all night, determining whether we should break down cells, catabolism, or create new cells, anabolism. In the next video, you will learn... All right, let's get out of there. So... With the metabolism, if you feed your metabolism and not your body, that might be a different uh, way to approach things. And the metabolism is everything about how your body works. The total energy expenditure. This is the one where Dr. Anderson says take your weight and multiply it by 11. Is that correct, Dorothy? That's the short form. That's the short form. Sure. If you want to go, if you want to go to, uh, I'll actually I can post both of these. I'll I'll post the um, uh, total energy expenditure. And, huh? If you don't want to do this calculation, then you go with the eleven pounds, eleven calories per pound. Exactly. That, that doesn't take into consideration. Uh, your muscles, it doesn't take into consideration how much energy you use. Uh, it's just an average 11. Yes, but it's very easy to get access to the basal metabolic rate, which would be the amount of uh, calories you would need to just do your norm, your basic function. And then uh, the T calculator, well, how I use that is I take it and put the weight I want to be and put, I have moderate exercise, and that shows me how many calories I would need in a day to maintain that weight. So anything less than that is going to allow me weight loss. And then all of those other factors that factor in there. So I think knowing your numbers is really important to you because obviously if I went over that 1,876, what would I do? Gain weight. Gain weight. Gain weight. Gain weight. So, so that is a really important number to, uh, to know. Metabolism, how fast or slow your body can break down food for energy use. Want to boost metabolism so the energy is utilized and burned more quickly. And ways to boost your metabolism is eating breakfast every day, exercise, and eating small frequent meals. The small frequent meals was not there as an example of something you can do for your health that doesn't require much. It could just be part of your daily routine. So adopting those habits of health, whether you're in the weight loss phase or not, will help you move towards health. Anybody have any comments they want to make or any questions they want to ask me. I mean, I've, I've, I've looked at that today and over the course of time. Um, on the five and one, it, I understand that it is 800 calories, but all of the nutrients that you need. 
Right. If, if you're on the four and two and one, then you would be at um, 12, I think. The um, three, six, a thousand, about 1,100. Uh huh. Because they figure a lean and green meal is 300. Yeah. So there'd be the, that, that would be the difference in. Um, and you don't, and you're not, you're not in fat burn. Right. Once you once you leave the five and one, uh, I I I have personal views on that. I'm really glad I did the five and one and lost seventy pounds. I mean, I think there's a lot behind that. But if you're not in any hurry and you know where you want to be, you, I think you can do it by eating healthy and doing the four, two, and one. But it's going to take a lot longer if you've got a lot of weight. After rereading the four, two, and one just recently, uh -huh. I always thought that your your one, which would be the grain, the milk, the uh, fruit, uh -huh. had to be with a meal. It does. It does not, and it can be with a bar. Oh well, that's that's what I meant. Yes, yes, I, but I thought it had to be with the lean and green. So oh no, no, a meal like even the metaphors. Yes. Yeah, and that's because of the. I never did it that way when I did tried the four, two, and one. <laughs> because I, I, the way that I read it, I didn't look at the menus because mm -hmm. where it has the menus, it shows you a bar plus an apple. So I didn't. I never even looked at the menus. I just assumed that it was with the actual meal, but it can be with one of the, um, you know, one of our replacements. All right. So I yeah, I hard enough time figuring out the one. Well, five is the one. Yeah, so and to it's, figure out two would make things complicated for yeah. me. And it's very interesting with the four, to two, and one, and that, uh, and getting that food in because that's very specific. You have to have if you're going to be compliant, you have to have what is uh, uh, comparable to two lean and greens. And I'm st I actually am still working on that. I had them send me what was the um, ratio of proteins, carbs, and um, uh, fats. Yeah. And so I'm going to try to approach it from that side. But I haven't been eating that much food where on a daily basis every day. I, it's something I could do on the occasion, but to every day have two meals and four bars <laughs> and one snack. That's a lot. So are, are you, you using the new, the new book? I am using the new book. Do you have one of the old ones? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think I do. Are you talking about this? <laughs> talking Is that about the, the four? Diet. No, the, the four, two, and one she's talking about. I'm talking about the diabetic one. Oh, okay. I do have the oh, old okay. diabetic one. Well, look in there because it it has the, the meal plans in there too. Which I think I, I'll do that. That is such a great I suggestion. I never thought of that. Yeah, because I went on the four two one and I gained five pounds. <laughs> but, yeah, but you used the wrong scale. You would have I, to be back on my scale to know if that was the case. That could be too, Connie, yeah. because I forgot. And yeah, that's what very, we talked about. That. Yeah, scales are very different. Just because I weighed myself time. yesterday, because I'm yeah. doing it on Monday, and I had lost that five pounds if I had yeah. gained it plus two. Yeah. So so so, so wrapping this up with a bow, it is that. I really think it matters to be looking at this as rehabilitating your body and your mind as opposed to losing weight. I think knowing what it is that you exceed in terms of daily calories that would add weight to you, you could, you could monitor that so you could stay underneath that so you don't make the situation worse. And then by looking at what you want to be and the amount of calories that you would consume if you were that way to maintain that way, that gives you that window to, to work with in order to start moving yourself back to a well body as opposed to trying to lose weight. I think trying to lose weight and thinking about diets, I think diets are damaging. I think that what we do with what uh, our programs are that it's all about the health. It's not about dieting and losing weight. Even the uh, rapid weight loss program is not about dieting and losing weight. It's about getting healthy, getting that excess weight. I just the way it was explained to me. People would say, uh, whenever they, I was changing so rapidly in 70 pounds, people would say, how much more are you going to need to lose it? 
starting to look sick. I mean, people don't help you keep going. They actually mean well with what they're doing, but they will start saying things to you when you start losing that weight that fast. But that the intent of, uh, of losing the weight that fast is to keep that person engaged and get that obesity down where it can now be handled in, in, in small pieces. So starting with the five and one makes complete sense to move you towards the uh, four, two and one. And then once you get to where you're going to live, in terms of you've rehabilitated your body to the point where you're content with that, that's why it's your own experiment, then that's when you go to the three and three. That's three uh, leading grains and three uh, metafast mills. Now, why, why use the metafast mills? Metafast mills every time you put something in your mouth, whether I'm drinking an infuser, whether I'm having a bar, when I'm eating that, I'm feeding nutrition in my, bo my body. If I buy something on the counter, and it says it's uh, organic and it's all these good things and uh, I'm eating it, I don't have the same confidence that when I'm eating that, that I'm getting the health that I get out of the food that I eat, that I get through. Amen. <laughs> and uh, Optivia. So I will always consider the food I eat to be Optivia simply because I love the fact that what I'm chewing, I'm not doing harm to myself. I'm still in that rehabilitation. And uh, that's, that, that's my take on everything. And that was the reason why I thought we would cover those calories, those BMRs, the T's, and understand how the metabolism works and that what we need to be doing is building our, our metabolism. And we can do it in a lot of ways that have nothing to do with weight loss and get healthier long before we ever lose the weight. Actually, you have to get healthy to lose weight. Yep. Yeah, losing weight is a byproduct of being healthy. And building muscle will allow you to burn more calories. Absolutely. And the fact that we lose muscle when somebody, that, that goes right along with your metabolism. Uh, as you get older and you start losing muscle, which is a natural process, now if you still, let's say that you consumed on a daily basis 1,400 calories, and now you're in that phase of your life where your metabolism has slowed down, but you keep eating up 1,400 calories. Well, that 1,400 calories that may, you maintained weight will now start adding weight to your body simply because you don't have the same muscle mass to burn calories. That's another reason to exercise is to get that muscle. Uh, you, people will eat, so people will exercise so they can eat more. I hear them talk about it. I'm, I'm going somewhere <laughs> So I'm going to get my exercise in because the muscle burns more fat. I believe if you go to the appendix in Dr. Anderson's book, you can find out what some of the things make burn calories. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot in those books. So now what I'm going to do is go to our success stories. And today, and uh, Do Dorothy, I know you did the Habits of Health call. Did anybody else here do the Habits of Health call this week? Okay. We have a person who started out 515 pounds. I don't know if I've met anyone. A wonderful call. Oh, what a wonderful call. I'm not going to play the whole call, but I am going to play that story. That's our uh, uh, success story for tonight. And I actually can't wait to share that with you. It's awesome. It is awesome. Get rid of this. And let's move this over. And... Let's go to our success story. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Back in November, I had as my co-host a very special guest who I'm bringing back again this evening. And we were talking a bit about our, both of us, our journey out of morbid obesity. And um, we got a lot of really great feedback that evening and a lot of really interesting questions that we're going to address on this evening's call tonight. So we're just really delighted to have you all here. So by way of a little bit, to, a little bit of introduction, I'll share a bit of my story with you, but I also want to give you an opportunity very shortly to hear from our, my co-host, uh, because you're going to love hearing her story. Um, and for some of you, you've already are familiar with my story. I've been with Optavia for quite some time now. I started back in August of 2010. And at that point, my health was in a very desperate place. I was um, almost 49. Uh, my children were like late teens, young adults. And because my health was in such a desperate place, I really was at the 
position where I suspected that I wouldn't get to meet my grandchildren. Um, my high blood pressure was high, cholesterol was high, you know, lots of health issues that go with morbid obesity. I weighed close to 400 pounds. And my physician said, you need to take a look at this program. He said, I think it's going to help you. And uh, so I came into it kicking and screaming. I fully expected it to not work. I'd tried lots of other things that didn't work. And I figured this would just be one of those. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe if I could lose 25, 50 pounds, that'd be awesome. I didn't think I'd lose 25. Well, I got two weeks into the program and had the same experience that a lot of you guys have had. Discovered the increase in energy. The weight was coming off fast. I was feeling great. And I realized at that moment that I wasn't going to lose 25 pounds. I was going to lose all of it. And over the next year and a half, a little bit more than that, over the next 19 months, I lost 215 pounds. It has been absolutely transformational for me in ways that I can't even, Bob, begin to tell you in the length of time that we have this evening. But I think the sweetest gift that this has given me, well, hard to say what the sweetest gift is, because the thing is, I did get to meet those grandchildren. I can now sit on the floor, lay on the floor to play with them. But I also, because of the tools and support that we have with Optavia, I also am not afraid that that weight is ever coming back. And that is an absolutely precious gift. So we're going to talk a little bit more this evening about why I know that's true. But I don't want to take any more time on this because I really want to give you a chance to hear from my gal, Brittany. Brittany, tell us a little bit about your story. Hi, everyone. And Obviously, I'm super, super thrilled to have this opportunity, but quick snapshot on my story so far. I had always been overweight as long as I can remember. I was the last person to finish running laps in kindergarten soccer practice. I, you may have heard I was denied access to ride a roller coaster on a seventh grade field trip. So again, weight has always been a problem, but it, it crept up, crept up. And I worked my way through high school and through college, landed my dream job, landed my dream job of a high school agriculture teacher with students that I absolutely love and adore. But I was the limiting factor. I was barely surviving each school day. The dismissal bell rang and all I wanted to do was go home, sit on the couch. I was surviving, but barely. The smallest of tasks each and every day seemed like mountains, and it wasn't fair to my students. It wasn't fair to me. Thankfully, I had a high school friend reach out to me a couple of times over a year and a half, and eventually I decided it was time to listen. I had no idea where I was weight-wise, and I, well, I couldn't weigh myself at home. I had to go to an industrial scale at my father's workplace. And the scale read 514. At 23 years of age, I weighed over a quarter of a ton. Ton. Yeah, no. It, oh, it was a bit of a punch in the gut. And after that, I knew it was time to get back in contact with that friend who was loving and caring on me. And we started the journey. I thought for sure I was going to be that one that this wasn't going to work for because I had tried everything. And after my first week, I was down 14 pounds. And in just shy of 19 months, I'm now down 310 pounds. But the weight, the weight is incredible. I, again, 310 pounds gone, and I don't have to worry about it coming back. But the mental freedoms I'm gaining, the physical freedoms means so much more. Every day is a new, exciting adventure, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see where this leads. And I gotta tell you, Brittany, I was getting so wrapped up in your story, I forgot to show him the after picture. Just amazing to me. And you and your coach have totally been rocking this. You guys, so a shout out to your coach, Krista. Um, you two have been an incredible team on this journey to health. And, and you know, Brittany, I know that on a call like this, there are a lot of people, there's a lot of people listening in who have traveled out of morbid obesity themselves. So if you're one of those people, I'd love to have you put into the chat. They're busy blowing up the chat box on how freaking amazing you look. And they're right. They're right. Um, but I would love to have you guys put in the chat box. How 
Uh, we will call that it. And uh, I'm going to post that uh, Habit Health call in our, um, yeah, I know Dorothy is so good, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> with the same person after person, I mean, every one of them touches you. Yeah. Yeah. Was the first lady, Connie, the one that we met at the... Yeah, she's always there. At the convention? Yeah, she is. She's such a... That's the one that we met at the convention that yeah. we couldn't believe? Yeah, yeah. That was fun. It, she looked like it, and that's why I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Was we, watched her. To to we watched her go through it, but it didn't happen quick, but it did happen eventually. Yeah. Well, I thank all you guys for coming. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. I hope it was beneficial. Yep. It was a great. So lots of food for thought. Bye. Bye. Good night, Everybody. everyone. Good night, everyone. No brain thing today? Um, the...